Hi, everybody. Kristen DeFrancisco, Assistant Superintendent of Schools, Groton Dunstable Regional School District. And I'm here today to talk to you about building inclusive learning communities and specifically how you may use that as the focus of a professional goal for the school year around engagement and motivation for students. And certainly this is a very large topic. Uh, it's a little larger than some of the others we, you might be considering this year as you enter this unprecedented year. Uh, but it, it is definitely um, a very popular topic right now. And it is also um, something that is very valuable, um, a valuable choice for your, for your feedback, uh, I, uh, rather for your professional goal. And I'm looking forward to talking with you a little bit about it. This is certainly a go slow to go fast topic area. Um, I am going to present a little bit to you about why that is the case. Um, when you're thinking about building inclusive learning communities, uh, they're great and they are going to be great and your work with them will be great. You are really focusing on helping students feel safe, supported, seen, and that they belong. It's one of the best things we can do for our students. And there's a variety of ways to do that. It is very layered. Um, so there's lots of different focus areas within this umbrella. If we can help students feel like they have a voice, they have some choice in how they are learning, and that they are having some fun, that is truly a gift if we're able to do that. Again, you are going to think about watching something, reading something, and writing something. And the options here are going to be a little wider than some of our other topics that we might be considering for professional goals. But again, there are different things that you can watch and read and write. And right now you're watching me talk a little bit about building inclusive learning communities. And I can talk a little about what I have done personally and also some suggestions from some of the things that I've seen done as well. So my experience with building inclusive learning communities, it has involved being consistent, clear, intentional, and collaborative about setting up how we do school in our classroom community, and then also thinking about how we do that in our larger building community. Um, and so the intentional piece, I think, is something really worth noting here. We always talk about being consistent and clear and collaborative, but intentional, this just doesn't happen on its own. It needs to be a very intentional practice that you have set for yourself. And so it might be that your professional goal is going to help you to be intentional about the work. Um, some of the ways that I have done this, I've, I've, I really want to make sure I'm giving clear and explicit expectations and I'm including students in that work or I'm including adults and teachers or educators in that work. Um, I'm being interactive. I'm interactive modeling for students or for even a group of adult learners whenever possible. Um, and I'm using the words, what did you notice and how can we work on this together? Uh, I'm refreshing and recalibrating expectations over and over again. So just because I've delivered them once, uh, no matter how old children are, no matter what level we're teaching, you need to refresh and recalibrate. You need to stop after a vacation and do it again. You need to stop after a long weekend. Sometimes you need to stop just in randomly in the middle of the week. We need to refresh and recalibrate. And we're going to talk about what how we do school, how we do work in our classroom, how we make sure we make room for all voices. And then of course, I've done some work with universally designing lessons, which again, within itself is, is quite a big task, but universally designing lessons is certainly one of the ways that you get yourself to an inclusive learning community. Um, some things I haven't necessarily done or created goals around, but I think are really important to mention here as options are incorporating culturally responsive practices. And while I've done a little bit of that um, work as a teacher, I've done more as, as an administrator and as a leader with adults, but that is one area that I know people are very interested in, and this might be an opportunity for you to start diving into that. I'm utilizing various discussion techniques to make space for all voices. There's a lot wealth of information and knowledge about this, and um, you know this might be something that you use at any level really, but might be appealing to middle school and high school teachers. Um, using student feedback to inform your instruction, talked a little bit about using feedback. We've been gathering feedback from students around their social emotional feelings coming back to school. We've been gathering feedback from teachers around their professional development experiences and how are we using that to inform our work. So that might be a focus for you. Or even creating space for students to reflect on their own learning styles and progress toward goals. Um, you, you, if you can't, again, it's, it needs to be intentional. What you're doing for students and what you're doing for your building your 
inclusive learning communities needs to be intentional. If you're gonna ask students to reflect on their work, you need to carve out time for them to do that reflection um, and have it be intentional and purposeful. So these are other areas to consider. So hopefully that gets you to start thinking about building inclusive learning communities. There's a variety of other things you can be thinking of as well. So now you need to read something. Um, and I will show you the resources that we have. Um, you will have a reading resource document for each of the suggested focus areas. And of course, if you know of another resource, please feel free to use that one as well for a specific area of building inclusive communities that you may wanna take a peek at. And then you're gonna write something. You will be writing about why did I choose this? Did I choose this because it's a buzzword? Did I choose this because it means something to me? Do, did I choose this because I have an entry point? So you're really gonna wanna be thinking about what excites you about inclusive learning communities. Um, what makes you a little nervous about inclusive learning communities? Identifying those obstacles and that, the, that anxiety point uh, will be helpful as you need to uh, maybe avoid certain things or get through obstacles as they arise. Who are you checking in with? Who's your think tank? Uh, are there others working on your topic? Even, is it, even if it isn't the same element of building an inclusive learning community, it's still toward the same goal. And so you should be seeking out and finding people, and we can help out with that, identifying those people as well, that are really um, also working on the same goal. And how can, how can you help each other in the journey of this professional goal that you've decided to work with? So in review, you are going to watch something, which you've already done. Hopefully that's gotten the mind kind of going on what inclusive learning communities are. You're gonna read something, so you'll check out those reading resources. You are gonna write something. You will reflect about your topic and why you chose it. You can certainly dig deeper if you would like using other resources on your topic. Or you can, and, and rather, you can check out the sample goal sheet provided and I'll, and I'll talk to that in just a moment. You've got this. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> um, and building learning, inclusive learning communities is a lot because it's a very important uh, part of our work as teachers. Um, and so helping to guide you through this, um, I think is a very valuable use of our time as teachers, as professionals in education and also as a district. I'm gonna take you to something to read about. Um, so if you're choosing some of those collaborative expectations, teacher language, interactive modeling, universal design, culturally responsive practices, discussion techniques, using student feedback, or making room for student reflection, there's a resource here. And remember, you don't need to know everything about the topic. A little something can help you really get started and grow from there. Sometimes these professional goals grow into two and three years. Uh, when you're really honing a skill and becoming an expert on a skill. You will notice that the universal design uh, suggestions, there's two. Many of us have worked with universal design here in Groton Dunstable, so starting with that UDL progression rubric might be a great way to go. But for those of you that are feeling like you're really kind of new to thinking about universal design, the getting started link will help you to understand what we mean when we say universal de design for learning, and that might be a precursor to checking out that progression rubric. Here's the space where you can write a little bit about learning communities and inclusive learning communities. Why did I choose it? What do I feel like my entry point is? Um, what makes you excited about using inclusive learning communities? And what makes you a little nervous about it? So there's an exercise for you to go through before you start writing your goal. Uh, and based on the goal assist template, I have actually filled this one out around teacher language and specifically uh, one of the things in teacher language that I found to be effective for me, but I had to learn a lot about was using open-ended questions. So that is part of teacher language is how you're thinking about how you're framing open-ended questions to students and whether or not you're using them effectively. And so that is what I chose to demonstrate this goal. I talked about through my reading why this was important. So this is actually definitely resources from, the, the book that I chose to use this was Power of Our Words. I did not put that in the resource because it is an entire book and I want, really wanted you to be able to get into the, to the, to the goal making, but Power of Our Words is a wonderful um, choice. Paula Denton is the um, writer and there's a forward in there also by Laura M. Hodges. I happen to have it next to me, which is why I'm able to read that. Um, 
But so after I talked about the specific piece, I explained in a sentence, I was encouraging students, encouraging students thinking can be more effective with the use of effective open-ended questions. I want to use affected, effective open-ended questions in an intentional way, as well as in the moment with my students. So there's both ways to plan to be intentional, have intentional questions, but also in the moment, how am I responding in a way that I'm hopefully being effective with my open-ended questions? Um, and then when I'm talking about measurable, I am talking about planning for effective open-ended questions to guide student academic work in each of my lessons will be a goal for me, as well as starting to understand how to use effective open-ended questions in the moment. I will do that by noting when I am able to craft a question in the moment. Talk a little bit more about that when we get down to the actual goal. I think this is achievable for me because I will be able to do my um, intentional questions. I can craft those while I'm planning my lessons for the academic piece. And then for the in the moment piece, I, I'm, I'm going to approach it by taking a baseline. How often do I have the opportunity to do that in the moment? And then I'm hoping to grow from there. Um, is my focus area relevant? Well, I think I talked a little bit about already about why it's relevant. Um, I want to create space for students to feel like they're problem solvers. I don't want to insert my own thinking into my comments because then I stop my students thinking. And so I want to make sure that I'm creating the platform for them to have their own thinking. Um, and I also want to make sure that the questions are explicit enough that they, they know what I'm asking them to think about and what I'm asking them to kind of explore a little bit more. It's not so open-ended that they don't have any idea where to go when I walk away from their group. Um, and I will also, I also feel like this is going to help students feel more confident and part of their own learning and engaged and motivated. The time bound piece is that I'm really going to focus on this first quarter before I revisit. I want to create a space in my planning templates for identifying effective open ended questions to hold myself accountable. And I also want to um, tally the moments or the opportunities I'm having to do this in the moment. Um, and how I handle those. So I'm gonna build in some reflection time for that during quarter, first quarter. So when I put that all together, my goal sounds something like this. Encouraging students thinking can be more effective with the use of effective open-ended questions. I want to use effective open-ended questions in an intentional way, as well as in the moment with my students. In the first quarter, I will plan for effective open-ended questions to guide students' academic work by creating a space in my planning templates for identifying effective open-ended questions to use during lessons. In addition, I will begin to tally in the moment opportunities and reflect on how I handled those opportunities. So there is my smart goal. Um, there are action steps toward this goal. Uh, I've, I already started, I've, I've read, I read Power of Our Words. Um, I wrote about it. Um, I created space in my planning templates. Here are some of these continuing through these action steps. I'm creating a tally system. Maybe I'll use post-it notes. I'd have to kind of fiddle around with a few things that might work for me as I'm teaching. I'm reflecting on in the moment opportunities at the end of each week. Where am I building that in? I'm beginning to create some cheat sheets for frequently noticed patterns of redirection in the moment. I might have that with me on my board or whatever. I'm walking around and working with students and that might be my little cheat sheet course, opportunities to add more there. And then sample evidence could be my written reflection of why I'm choosing teacher language, specifically open-ended questions, um, some sample lessons, including those open-ended questions I'm intentionally creating. Um, and the article that I'm reading around teacher language, I might even put up some of the chapters that I read around power of our words, uh, specifically on open-ended questions, um, some of my weekly reflections. So these are only a few samples of the evidence that I could be using as I am moving through my professional goal. So again, inclusive learning communities, building them takes intentional, consistent um, effort. Uh, as much as we can be collaborative with students around building those communities, the more they're gonna be engaged. And in this particular example, I, I've geared towards using open-ended questions to help with that. I also know that there are lots of different ways that you might be thinking about approaching inclusive communities. And I can't wait to hear about what those are. And I can't wait until you're able to uh, come together with a think tank and bounce off some ideas um, and touching base with building leaders to see where we're going with using inclusive community uh, topic area as a, a professional goal for some of our educators this year. So good luck, have fun, and thank you for watching.